Hello, everyone, and welcome to David's Awards for Movies He Watched in 2018. Not necessarily movies that came out in 2018, if that makes sense. So, on to the first category, which is Best Movie. The first nomination is 10 Cloverfield Lane, um, which is a thriller set in the Cloverfield universe, but it really uh it started out as an original story and they just kind of added that later and i wouldn't necessarily say that it makes or breaks the movie um it's it's a thriller and it it has a great sense of pacing and uh, a lot of tension and it's a very like closed off story it doesn't like go to different locations uh very much it it's it's quite good of course because it's in this category the next nomination is Mission Impossible Fallout, which um, was wonderful in the theaters. I watched it in IMAX. I loved the helicopter stuff at the end. It's just like a, a very, very good spy thriller. And uh, I feel like it's kind of taken the crown from James Bond for now because like Spectre kind of dropped the ball. Um, and yeah, you know, it has the great theme uh, theme song and everything. And uh, the the practical um action the practical effects and the action pieces were all just wonderful great to watch tom cruise is crazy wonderful the next movie on my list is avengers infinity war big surprise you probably all know that um you know i love superhero stuff uh i won't love everything that comes out venom is not on this list you know but uh yeah avengers infinity war it was just such a great culmination of um everything that's come before it and it was it was better than i expected and there are some things going into it that i like kind of guessed but there were definitely some surprises as well and the way that it kind of made the villain the main character and developed his story a lot i really appreciate because I, I love the uh, villain stories so yeah and then the next um one came out late dis um 2018 which was spider-man into the spider-verse and uh this one surprised me a bit as well like the reviews were all glowing everyone liked it but um yeah i wasn't sure like i'm i'm a big spider-man fan i've read like the ultimate spider-man comics with uh, miles morales um and they really did a good job of like drawing inspiration from that but not doing a direct adaptation of it which is great because I like to be surprised in my comic book movies, not just be like, oh, good job. You did that thing from years ago that I've already read. Um, yeah, the, the animation was cool. I like how it had some like pop art things like, you know, the tires breaking um, when the, and the music was good. It was it was quite funny, really. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. Like if you haven't seen it, I'd recommend it. It's, it's great for the whole family. And uh, my last one is Aquaman, which I feel like is the most, um, you know, kind of guilty pleasure sort of thing. I wouldn't recommend it for everyone. Like, it's not the superhero movie to change people's minds on superheroes. But um, it it was really well directed. It was directed by James Wan, who, uh, who did Saw and The Conjuring, and I think one of the Fast and Furious movies. But um, there's a lot of really cool action and uh, special effects. Um, particularly if you saw in the trailer when Nakaman is holding the flare and he's uh, swimming away from the uh, whatever sea creatures. Um, it, it was just all cool. It was cool, you know? So that those were all the nominations. And um, the winner is... Drum roll, whatever. Uh, Avengers Infinity War. I mean, uh, no big surprise here. Okay, on to the next category which is best comedy first nomination is lego batman which kind of came out a couple years ago but I, I hadn't seen it till now and um i really enjoyed it because it it makes a lot of references to the batman films like um going so far back as the adam west ones and to the christopher nolan and even batman v superman um, it, it's very good at like making fun of the DC properties to the point where it's like, did DC make bad things on purpose just to make fun of it in this movie? Who knows? But um, yeah, it has uh, Will Arnett as uh, Batman and Michael Sarah as Robin. So I love those two from Arrested Development. So it was, it was great to hear them again. I'd say that the uh, opening scene of this movie like is really great. 
And if you haven't seen it, just go watch it. And if you really like it, definitely watch the rest of the movie. Uh, next one up, it, it was a bit of a surprise. It was a uh, Jumanji 2, uh, Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle. And um, the sorry if you hear my cat outside the door. She doesn't understand that this is a recording session. Um, yeah, like uh, I thought that definitely the standout performances were Jack Black and uh, The Rock in this. Um, if you don't know the, the concept, pretty much these teenagers go into a video game and then these actors play those teenagers. So Jack Black is playing a teenage girl and uh, The Rock is playing this uh, not very confident uh, character and uh, I thought it, the concept was well done like um, in regards to a video game type movie normally they're not very good but uh, it, it was a lot of fun. Next nomination is Game Night which has uh, Rachel McAdams and another Arrested Development character um, oh right uh, Jason Bateman yeah yeah and uh, it's the concept where like they're doing a uh, game night where they're pretending, they think it's all pretend, there's not actually criminals uh, hunting them down. I, I'm not explaining this very well, whatever. Um, but yeah, no, it, his brother um, is actually in trouble and they kind of have to figure out that this isn't a game and they're actually in trouble. And it's kind of dark comedy and I, I know it is very well done. It has um, one of the characters from Breaking Bad, the uh, Todd, I think his name was. And he was he was very funny in this as the like cop next door who's not invited to the game night and uh, is always kind of investigating them why he's not invited. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it was funny. Um, and last nomination, I didn't watch as many comedies this year. I guess I watch more television for that, um, is Last Action Hero, which is definitely one of the older movies on in this video. Um, it is from 1993, and it's pretty much a parody of um, action movies from the 80s, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger himself. And it's just so over the top that I love it. And really, I don't want to give much away, because um, it actually has some... I don't know, I guess not necessarily a huge amount of twists and turns, but just like, I would imagine the trailer probably gives away um, some part of it, which I, I think it's just better going in blind and seeing if you like it for yourself. And uh, yeah, the winner is actually Last Action Hero. I, I thought it was hilarious. It, there's a particular scene where Arnold Schwarzenegger um, acts out Hamlet through the um, imagination of a like 10 year old or something and that's one of my favorite comedy scenes ever I think now so yeah uh, go watch it if you have any interest in that the next category is worst movie that I watched because uh, you know it's, the Oscars don't go over worst movies and, and that stuff so I thought it might be interesting to in include this um, nomination number one, Justice League. Justice League, it, it's just a, it's a mess of a movie. I, I think I could have enjoyed it if it had, like, any redeeming cool scenes. But really, it, it didn't. It just, uh, I don't know if you know the backstory of it, but the director, Zack Snyder, who did the Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, he kind of dropped out late because the family uh, tragedy and then Joss Whedon the guy who directed the Avengers picked it up and the movie got chopped down from like almost three hours to two hours and they redid scenes and you can tell while you're watching it because like Ben Affleck has gained weight and he's acting differently obviously and just like oh it just I don't know it wasn't very good I there's some parts that are kind of fun to make fun of like sometimes I like watching movies like just to see how bad they are, like the room, and be fascinated, but just, it didn't really in elicit any emotion from me, you know? It's supposed to be the, oh, Superman comes back to life movie, but nothing, really. The next movie on my list uh, is The Open House, and if you haven't heard of this, it's because it's a Netflix original movie, and like a lot of Netflix stuff, the, the trailer looked pretty good. The trailer, you know, the, the movie's well-produced, and it, they, it's a horror movie. And um, 
Yeah, just uh, they are like, oh, we're, we need to sell this house, but we're going to live in it while we're trying to sell it. But creepy stuff keeps happening. And it was just cliche after cliche. And, like, as I was watching it, like, the more I watched it, I was, the more I was like, okay, I hope this building to something uh, to make this all worth it. And then it just, it kind of ends. It, it has, it's hard to explain, just one of the worst endings I've seen of a movie, like, in recent memory, really. It just, like, left a really bad taste in my mouth. Uh, the next nomination is The Cloverfield Paradox, which is another Netflix original. I didn't watch the uh, trailer for it during the, what, Super Bowl or something? I just went right in because I was like, oh, the last Cloverfield movie was uh, good, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Uh, this one this one could be as well. And um, I don't know, it, it just... It just didn't really work. I um, I heard about this one as well. It was going to be its own movie, but then they stuck it into the Cloverfield universe, and just it, it it didn't really work. It just it wasn't that scary. Some like weird things were happening, but just yeah. I guess there's it's hard to talk about these movies. I didn't write down much about them like at the time that I watched them. I just. I have no desire to rewatch them at all. And the last nomination is Gods of Egypt, which, um, have you, did you see trailers for this? I actually enjoyed parts of this movie. Uh, not enough to make it a good movie, but just, I love seeing money being flushed down the toilet in a movie, because this movie has a lot of big name actors, a lot of white people playing Gods of Egypt, which, um, I don't know if you know history, but I, I don't think that would really happen. Well, I, I don't think the gods of Egypt would have been white. Wouldn't have looked like uh, Gerard Butler, for example, or uh, Jamie Lannister from Game of Thrones. So, yeah, there were a handful of funny parts, just like... It seems like it was made by, like, old white guys who thought that people would think this is cool, and the gods of Egypt transform into, like, CGI Iron Man-type creatures and fight each other. Even, um the actor from Black Panther gets in on the action as the god of wisdom and just it was absolutely ridiculous uh, I might make a video just uh, showing some of the clips of the actual good parts but definitely not worth sitting through and the uh, winner well, loser I guess the worst movie is The Open House I just I can't recommend this to anyone like Megan and I like horror mil- films and just it, it was, I wish we could just go back and not watch that. Yeah, so that was kind of the award sections, but um, I also kept track of other things. Um, these are kind of like, I guess, runner-ups. So movies that I watched that I would recommend. And the first on the list is Godzilla Resurgence, which you may not have heard of. Um, it also goes by Shin Godzilla. It is the 2016 Japanese Godzilla film. But it's kind of a reboot for them because Godzilla evolves throughout the film. And i it's a lot about the politics of Japan and how they respond to this event. Um, there's not necessarily a main character. It's, it's a lot of um, like just talking through what they should do, what they know about the monster. And just it definitely it, it's pretty the Godzilla himself is pretty creepy. And just um, you understand their point of view and. It's nice to... I know, it, it. he evolves and it's different than the Godzilla that you know. And I wouldn't recommend, like, watching a trailer or anything just so you can, like, be surprised by what the Godzilla looked like. I think that, like... I think it's better than the American 2014 Godzilla, except for that really cool scene at the end, the actual fighting of Godzilla in 2014. That that stuff was awesome. But you get to see a lot more Godzilla in this movie if you're uh, if you want to know. Uh, the next recommendation is Annihilation, which um, is a sci-fi kind of mixed with horror film, um, and it uh, it's made by the guy who made Ex Machina. And if you haven't seen Ex Machina, go watch Ex Machina. Uh, the same director and writer, and it's based off a book. Um, and it's it was visually very interesting because uh, they kind of go into this field where everything's kind of always in a state of evolution, I suppose. Um, yeah, and it was just a, 
some parts were a bit slow. That's why I wouldn't necessarily put it in like the best movies, but I would still rate it about like an eight out of ten. The third act has some really cool um, visuals and music. I'd recommend having a good sound system um, in particular because there's kind of not necessarily the inception sound, but kind of some kind of like warbly like. Brrr stuff at the end which is really neat um it, it's unique for sure uh the next movie on my list is dunkirk which i hadn't got i didn't watch in theaters probably should have because all the sounds and everything but i mean my setup here is is pretty good yeah it's a christopher nolan film so it's it's good it's nice that you know he's not just doing batman anymore i thought that interstellar was a bit disappointing so it was nice to see dunkirk um it was it's a uh, you know more realistic since it's based on a historical event. There's a lot of tension in it. Like it can uh, if you don't like seeing people like drowning or getting bombarded or um, stuff like that. You know maybe maybe not the movie for you, but obviously very well shot. I think um, Hans Zimmer comes back for the music. Uh, they work together on the Dark Knight trilogy and um, Inception, so it's just very well made film. Um, it's just like. I guess it's probably not my go-to sort of genre, and that's what kind of excluded it from it being one of my like best slash favorite movies. Um, the next movie uh, that I would recommend is Deadpool 2. I, I thought it was better than the first one. Um, not necessarily f funnier, but just like the character was a lot better developed, and it was more about family than just uh, revenge. Which was great. It reminded me of the like comic books I've read with him, um, Uncanny X Force. Not that anyone's probably read that, but um, yeah, no, it, it was good. There were some good jokes, some good action. It was it was fun. I I wish I had seen it in theaters, but I mean, you don't really need to see it in theaters. But it took me a while to get around to watching this one. And this um, this next movie that I would recommend, uh, I just watched it last night is uh the man from uncle and um it's it's a 60s spy um adaptation of an old tv show that we've probably never heard of because we're not over 40 and um i know it's a lot of fun i really liked uh henry cavill he was also in um one of my favorite movies from last year um mission impossible fallout and he kind of plays this american he kind of reminds me of um archer from the show Archer. And um, no, it's directed by Guy Ritchie, who did the Sherlock Holmes film. So it's very stylish. The soundtrack is great. I just thought that um, it just lost a bit of steam in the third act. And uh, yeah, it was just under two hours. Definitely a good one to watch with friends, I would say. Um, good spy movie. And uh, my next recommendation is another spy movie. Um, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, the fifth one. So um, I ended up watching Mission Impossible Fallout, the sixth one in theaters, without having seen this one. I wouldn't say that really changed my experience of it. They kind of tied together a bit. Um, no, it was good. It was a lot of good. Uh, don't mistake this for MI5, which is a completely different movie starring um, the Jon Snow. I, for some reason... Like, I was like, oh, that's weird. They just called Mission Impossible MI5. So I started watching it on Netflix. I'm like, wow, they've really... 10 or so minutes in, I'm like, wow, Tom Cruise hasn't come in. But, like, I remember the trailer. He, like, was running to get onto a uh, onto an airplane. And this movie, they were going to an airport. So I'm like, okay, maybe this is the right movie. But no, it's definitely not. MI5 is a completely different movie. And it's not very good. Would not recommend that one. The Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, quite good. Uh, also better than um, recent James Bond uh, Spectre film. And the last movie on my movies that I would recommend that I've seen uh, in the last year is uh, Total Recall, which uh, is directed by Paul Verhoeven. It's another movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And uh, it's a sci-fi concept. I'm not going to get too much into it, but... Um, he, he's a very interesting director. He did a Robocop and Starship Troopers. And those are another two movies that I would recommend people watch. They're all, um, I think they're all rated R. They can be quite gory. So they're not for everyone. Like, uh, I don't think my mom would like them, for example. 
But um, yeah, no, it's good. I would give it around eight, eight point five. I don't know. Um, don't have my ratings on me right now. Okay, so next category is disappointments, where uh, some people might disagree on me with me um, for a couple of these, but you know, happens. And uh, my first one in this is a quiet place because I find that like when people hype up movies a lot, it definitely brings my expectations expectations up and I did not see this in theaters by the way so I didn't get that like no one wants to eat their popcorn or make a sound to interrupt the quietness I just I don't know I thought some of the there were some bad decisions that the characters made considering it's an apocalyptic situation and just uh I don't know I wouldn't necessarily recommend it it's just uh I think it's like more of a kind of thriller not that scary movie good for like people who don't necessarily like horror that much but um yeah just i I won't go too into it uh the next one was uh baby driver i I still think the movie is good i just thought compared to like uh, everyone well compared to the director's previous films um edgar wright is the director he did um he did scott pilgrim he did uh hot fuzz he did uh, Shaun of the Dead. Just I, I thought this one was like okay. It, like the soundtrack was kind of cool. I didn't see it in the theaters either. I think that was probably a mistake because the like car scenes and everything they were all well done. I just I just thought the character and story were just just okay. Like um, I still give it like I don't know seven out of ten. Just uh, disappointing compared to what everyone else was saying. Uh, my next disappointment is uh, Black Panther. I, I can't believe that um, it's up for Best Picture instead of Avengers Infinity War. I mean, I, I get it because of, you know, the whole... Yeah, you know, I mean, I get it. It's it's nice representation and everything. Just, uh, I know, I, I thought the movie didn't quite live up to the hype, especially in the third act. Like, the action and CGI and stuff just didn't look that good. Uh, compared to you know all the like costumes and everything in the first act and just I don't know his his character arc was kind of it was just fine I but it, it's funny because you'd think that I would like this movie more because I really like the villains in it both um the Andy Circus and Michael B Jordan character but uh, and the soundtrack was good another thing that like Marvel movies aren't always good at just uh I don't know, it, it's just kind of missing something. I, I guess I just, I, I like Black Panther interacting with the other superheroes and everything as well. Um, my next uh, somewhat disappointing movie was uh, The Disaster Artist, which um, is the kind of talking about the making of the movie The Room, one of my favorite, like, so bad it's good movies. And just, I had already kind of heard a lot of the, like, backstory behind it from the audiobook that one of the creators had written and just... I don't know, I felt it was a bit overacted. There are some parts they could have included or shortened down and just, um, I still thought it was funny, but I, I just think, go watch The Room. It, it's better in its own special way. Um, and my last disappointment is uh, Venom. Venom is, um, it, it had some good parts, but just like it started with um, the first like 15 minutes are kind of useless because they... They kind of, like, introduce everyone, then they, like, flash forward, like, a year later after he's broken up with his girlfriend and lost his job, and, like, introduce everyone again, and that just kind of kills the pacing, but uh, once he actually gets the symbiote and stuff, there's a lot of stuff that I liked. I, I mean, I love um, I love Tom Hardy as an actor, and, um, yeah, no, like, I think the sequel could be good. I mean, it made enough money. It made... Uh, 800 million off of like a hundred or so million budget it's it's crazy honestly uh no one expected it to make that much um yeah yeah that's it for disappointments and uh just here's a couple movies that i didn't get around to watching um i mean i didn't see most of the like oscar nominations besides uh, black panther um i didn't really have any interest in bohemian rhapsody the kind of biopic stuff uh, just doesn't really do it for me most of the time um I did watch this movie about Liberace, which was kind of interesting. It was uh, Into the Candelabra. Um, that, that was interesting. Anyways, uh, the the ones that I didn't watch from 2018, which I want to watch, uh, there's one called Mandy, which is kind of um, 
Nick Cage goes crazy in this kind of horror tele- type movie. I haven't looked too much into it, but I've heard it's good. Um, next one is Isle of Dogs. Uh, the Wes Anderson movie. He, I really liked uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox and some of his other movies. Um, I just I just didn't get around to it. Uh, Ocean's 8 seems it could be uh, cool. I, I didn't get around to watching that either. Same with uh, Solo, uh, Star Wars Story. You would think that like I would have seen this because I'm a nerd and I like stars, but really, like, uh, I don't know, the lead up and everything to it, them changing directors, it, it didn't really get me excited for the film. Like, I'm sure I'll like it enough, but just the fact that it released so close after The Last Jedi, I enjoyed The Last Jedi. I just, I wish Disney wasn't milking the franchise so much. It, yeah. And then, um, yeah, I, of the Oscar nomination stuff, I, I, I'm interested in Black Klansman and The Favorite. Um, those both seem like they they would be interesting. Uh, well, that's the end of the video. I didn't really plan an ending or anything. Uh, if you made it this far, thank you. And, uh, you know, feel free to hit me up and tell me I'm wrong or whatever. Okay, uh, until next time, I'll, I'll try to make some more videos like this. I think it went okay. Okay, bye.